Now we got one little teeny tiny Tayak thing to do. Tayak. Stan Cook, I believe you're the president of uh, Tayak? Is that the is that the tourism industry association? Uh, oh, the tourism industry, according to Cook. <laughs> Stan, would you like to join me up for here for a minute? Stan has become one of the finest ambassadors for Newfoundland and Labrador that there's ever been. He's at the, the pinnacle now. Yes, absolutely. He's affectionately known as the past, 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 past president. And now, thanks to me, this year he's done. You're done. Well, it's it's been been great working with you. You had tremendous insight, guidance. He's trying to be. He's trying. I'm trying to be serious. He's trying to be serious. <laughs> but honestly, when you become president of this organization, if you don't have a good past president behind you, you really, you really got to learn the hard way, and that's by listening to the executive director <laughs> or the CEO. So that you deserve our our thanks, our appreciation for all your effort. We really appreciate what you've done for us and helped us. And there's a little token of our appreciation for you. Oh, beautiful! Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I was saying at the table a little bit earlier that it's all, you, know, you, you do these things all for fun, but those pants last year, that was too much. Uh, uh, I don't think I'll ever want to live that down. <clears throat> I have to apologize for my voice. <clears throat> I'll, uh, I guess I'll give a public health service announcement to you that uh, five o'clock this morning, there was a very contagious laryngitis virus that was f floating around my suite. And the 30 or 40 people that were there at 5 o'clock this morning, many of them were speaking like me today. And I'm only giving this uh, warning because I'd say around 3 or 4 o'clock this morning that virus might make its return. And it is very contagious. So I apologize for my voice. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm humbled. I'm surprised. And well, obviously surprised. It's, uh, I've had wonderful, a wonderful 12 years uh, on the board and the executive. And seeing there today, looking up, and seeing Bruce, who has always a great guy, but has he not grown into this role as being the chair? <clears throat> and I mean that sincerely. Not that Bruce wasn't a very successful business person and volunteer and in his own right in Gander and other places, but watching him up there today at lunch and doing all this oratorical stuff that he didn't really like at the beginning. I mean, he's as slick as it comes, so I'm really proud of Bruce. Um, excellent job. And also looking at Todd and Jill our future cheers, hopefully. Like, we're in good hands. We're in really, really, really good hands. So there are a couple of all-stars to keep your eye out on as well. <clears throat> I'm very, very thankful to be in this industry, as many of us are. We're very fortunate. We have a wonderful, wonderful industry that we're in. We're lucky to be in it. I'm going to uh, give you one of my 30-second stories, Brett. <clears throat> One of the main reasons why I really found, as I've gotten older, I've enjoyed it. I was involved in the family business. We always kind of did it, and, you, you know, I, I, I liked it. But as I've gotten older, I've realized how, how lucky I am to be involved in it. Two years ago, a couple showed up at our shop in Cape Royal from Michigan. I don't think I've told anyone the story. I don't think I have. Anyways, they showed up from Michigan. Nice couple, and it was the end of June, and uh, I ended up taking them out with a small group of people. And the lady had come up for the geology. She was a geology teacher in Michigan, high school teacher. As we paddled around, um, she was saying that she'd really come up for the geology. It's, uh, she was uh, really excited about it. And we get out there, and, and in a normal course in June and July, and usually the first few weeks of August, there's a lot of whales around. So we had some wonderful humpback whale stuff. 
around the boat, jumping around. It was, it was a nice tour, like, like you'd like to have. It was a really, really good tour. So she had a great time, sweet people. The other people in the, in the group were quite nice. We get back in the shop, and she's talking to me, saying what a wonderful time. She felt it was a life-altering day, and Newfoundland has been on uh, her list to go for so long. She loved the rocks, she loved the waterfalls, the whales were spectacular. And she's talking to me, which is a common thing. People come in and they had this great experience. Her husband was talking to my parents, and my parents are not afraid to talk either. So they're having this wonderful chat back and forth, and I'm kind of looking. And, but there's something a little bit different about this conversation. So I'm in one side of the shop chatting with her and other guests, and she's really loving it. And uh, the husband's over there. <clears throat> so I think no more if he comes over and kind of shakes my hand and, and they go on. So uh, when they leave, mom and dad say to me, the lady had the tour of Miss Kenya, did, uh, did you hear her story? And everyone's got a story, we all got a story. I was like, no, I mean, I just heard she came up here. He said, well, her husband told the story and uh, he actually was crying. That's, that was kind of the weird vibe thing that I could see in the corner. Um, this lady, sweet lady, had been diagnosed eight months before with cancer. And she had made, I guess what now is commonly referred to as a bucket list after the movie. She uh, decided the things she wanted to do before she was passing on. And Newfoundland and Labrador was number one on her list, mainly for the geology. And so mom was hugging me, oh, I'm so proud you gave this lady. I'm like, mom, I just did a tour, it's not a big deal. I know he loved it, it's, which is a great time. The whales made the show, I just talk. That's my gig, right? <laughs> so uh, great time, wonderful. Got a lovely little note from her a few weeks later, still ranting, raving a three-page note, really, really sweet. Middle of September, I come off the water, and I look up, and there's this lady, looking a bit different, but there I'm like, God, and I, we see thousands and thousands of people, as many of you do, in your business. And, you know, you, lot, the faces stick out to you. Sometimes the names don't. But where I'd seen this lady just a couple months before, I'm like, wow, you know, Michigan, she was going away. And then I heard the backstory from mom and dad. It's like, wow, okay. She was given a couple months to live six or eight months ago. Now she's back again. And she's back with her husband and a couple of big, tall, good-looking kids who were her sons. Middle of September, and they were, uh, they'd taken uh, the term off college, from college down in uh, the U.S., so uh, she looked a lot gaunter than she had looked a couple months before, and she was wearing a, like a hat that was uh, obviously was on because uh, she had undergone some treatments of some sort, and she had this hat on. And she'd come back, and she was so energetic and vibrant, a fair bit frailer, and was very excited about going out. And she had raved and raved and raved about Newfoundland and Labrador to so many people and to her sons so much, and that she had such a life-altering experience that she wanted them to come up and experience it with her. So uh, she was a bit frail, and they were all excited, and they were very, um, they were happy to be there. They were reserved. Obviously, it was not a great time in their life, but they were very th proud to be there with their mom in, in this new place. And they were kind of getting their head around all these people that seemed a little bit too friendly, and they were trying to figure it all out. <clears throat> and I came over to Dad, and Dad said, yeah, I got to straighten away. I'm going to take her out in the group. I'm going to jump in the back of the boat for her with her, her buckles, her two boys can paddle alongside with us in the group, and, but I'm gonna paddle her because she was just, you know, wasn't quite up to it. It was a perfect, that's great, and uh, it, was all, it was all good. So she was very excited and asked me about the whales. Did I see any whales in the trip i just come off? And I was like, because that's really why she brought her sons back to see these whales and the great interaction, them two or three feet away and all that. So I said, I'm really sorry. We haven't, you know, I'm sure Dad told you, but we hadn't seen any humpbacks in probably three weeks. And we had a couple of minkies in the harbor a couple of days ago. But this time of year, Cape Royal is nine kilometers long. The humpbacks don't really come into the bottom of the bay anyway. We get hundreds and hundreds of them, but they're kind of about a half a kilometer where we were going to paddle away from. So I was like, I feel really bad, but I really don't think that's going to happen today. And she said, oh, you know, they'll love the waterfalls, the caves, the eagles, the geology, because they like geology like me. And I think, perfect. So, you know, they, they go on. Of course, mom's crying. <clears throat> She's there, you know, okay, very good. <clears throat> They're gone. We get them on the beach and, you know, Skipper and a couple guides and ten people go off. The three of them are there. And they're not gone. Thirty seconds and dad radios. The shop and I'm in the shop to so pick up the radio. He said, Stanley, come out to the wharf. I'm like, oh, Jesus, someone tip over. No one tips. What's going on? September's going to be cold. So I, as I walk out to the wharf, <clears throat> we have a little shop. Uh, some of you have been there, but we have a little shop on one side of the road. There's a fish plant and a wharf in front of us. <clears throat> as I walk out to the wharf, there's a whole bunch of fishermen standing on the wharf, and some of the fish plant workers are on the wharf. I'm like, geez, what is going on? Someone's in the drink. Are they dead? Oh, God. And as I came out to the wharf, 
there was a little uh, six boats, like Dad and one of them and a couple of our guides. And Dad was with this lady, just probably about five or six feet away from the, the group, but right there. And there was a humpback whale, a big, big humpback whale, s still in the water, like not moving, about six feet from her boat. Right off the edge of the wharf. So I'm like, whoa. I'm like, what? am I seeing what I'm seeing? And the fishermen saying, geez, boy, I'm fishing here 40 years, never seen a whale up there before. This is crack, this, and they're all going on. The, the, all the fish platforms looking out the window, watching, everyone's all excited. Uh, she was crying, her sons were emotional. It was a, anyways, uh, it was an amazing experience. So they paddle out and do their tour. <clears throat> and uh, when dad comes in, he says, Stanley, for the last two and a half hours, that whale followed me and her around for two and a half hours. And as we hit the beach, it stopped, turned around, and swam off. Uh, when she came in, her husband, and he, it was very, very emotional for them, and, and she was so proud and happy. And it, it hit me then, how lucky am I, how lucky are we to be in an industry where we can provide something like that for a person, an experience that was truly mind-blowing. And after that day, I said, Dad, I don't know if I can ever leave this business. I guess I'm going to be poor for the rest of my life because this is just too <laughs> important. <clears throat> But three weeks before Christmas that year, we received another really long three-page note, but this time it was from her husband, and uh, she'd passed away about three weeks after coming up on her second Newfoundland trip. And he said that at the wake, ar around the coffin, by far and away the most pictures that she had were of her Newfoundland Labrador experience, and a lot of pictures of her with, with the whales and her with her sons with the whales. Mom bawled and cried and did it all too, and it was all, but we're fortunate. <clears throat> in this room, we're the leaders of the industry. We work in an industry that is truly sp special and spectacular. And when you go away from an event like this, take the things you heard. Take T.A. Loeffler's inspirational stuff. Take what Rob Greenwood said. Take the stuff. Go back. Don't ask yourself, what is H&L doing for me? What's the Department of Tourism and Culture and Recreation doing for me? Figure out what you can do for them. Figure out how they can help you. Be a partner. Be a player. Be a leader. <clears throat> when, I, when I did get involved in the association and later on the board and of course to where I am finishing the board now, I learned a lot and, and Land and then Roger and Stellman and, and a lot of the past chairs were very uh, helpful to me. Just to kind of navigate a little young fella, you know, 32 years old, being a chair, like what to do and I found a Excellent, and the skill set that I picked up through this, I wouldn't say Leslie and Winnie could ever create an e-merit skill set for the stuff you gotta do, but learn, but it's been a wonderful professional development opportunity for me, and I don't regret any, any of the last 12 years at all. I've had a great time and a wonderful run. The association is by far and away in better hands now that I'm not involved, believe me. They're great. Uh, I'm, I really appreciate it. I don't even know why I told you that story. It kind of hit me as I'm sitting on the stool and the boys are roasting me, but. That would be, a, I guess that's a, a parting message. We are becoming more and more professional. As I looked around the room, <clears throat> as kind of a side, I said this to the boys earlier, every year uh, the talent level seems to be going up in this room a good bit. And so does the tourism operators that show up as well. But I, uh, I, gotta, I gotta say, I'm, I'm really proud and pleased to be involved in HL, and I'll, I'll always be around the member. I will be sitting in the back from here on in, no more up at the front, and that's perfect for me too. So thank you very much. I really appreciate the time you went into making this happen, Bruce. It was surprising, but uh, I feel touched by it. So thanks.